Since its humble beginnings, mountain biking has become a global phenomenon. To millions of cyclists, these bikes are more than a form of recreation. They're a way of life. The question of who actually invented the mountain bike is steeped in myth and legend, but certain facts are undeniable. It is widely accepted that the epicenter of the mountain bike movement was in Northern California's Marin County. Here in the 1970s, a few dozen hardcore cyclists took to the hills in a collaborative effort that by the end of the decade would become the modern mountain bike. Their shared passion and obsessive tinkering led to the birth of a multi-billion dollar industry, a form of recreation for the masses, and an Olympic sport. Some of these athletes were serious road racers with dreams of Olympic glory, while others were counterculture types. With little in common, except for their love of pre-World War II newsboy bicycles, these two tribes rode down the mountain that towered over the small towns where they grew up. We had our own thing going on here. For us, the mountain bike thing was freeing. It was like flying. It was this small group of riders who quite literally reinvented the wheel. Their innovations made some of them wealthy, some of them wise, and all of them proud to have made a meaningful contribution to society. They had no idea that they were creating a worldwide sensation. It was this party out in the woods. We started to evolve with adding gears and adding front brakes. Super strong brakes, you know, stuff that you had total confidence in. Later on, you know, we put uh, Schwinn made strap-on cantilevers, and we put strap strap-on cantilevers in the front fork, so we had a little bit of a front brake. Cantilever brakes were the way to go until somebody invented something a lot better. And of course, now you can get hydraulic brakes and disc brakes. But the only problem was not being able to pedal up the hills with the one speeds. It was pretty tough. So the uh, five-speed, ten-speed concept made it available to get into these areas, and uh, that's when all the fun began. <laughs> you know, a multi-gear bike. It just totally made sense, you know, out of a fat tire bike. And um, to have something with ultra-wide gear ratios was the ticket. And we went for a ride, and Gary, on his 50-pound bike, just rode away from the rest of us, you know, on this long climb. And we just go, wow, got to have them. Well, now it's on, and now everybody's coming into it. Shimano's making, you know, better parts. And the more conservative Europeans eventually got in the act themselves but mainly after the Japanese had become the uh, market leaders in off-road components and in many respects off-road off bikes themselves. Shimano Gior XT meant respect for mountain biking. XT answered the call with a complete group. Rear derailers, shifters, front derailers, brake levers, all specifically designed to meet the needs of these new mountain bikes. Better mud clearance, more uniform shifting, this is where mountain biking takes off. At first there was one, and then there were two. Three chances to answer before I am through. Five finger discount, six ways to be true. Seven deadly sins, and I got me eight. That's what you hear. As mountain biking grew in popularity, it searched for an identity. Festivals surrounding the mountain bike as a celebration of people coming together with one binding tie, the mountain bike. This new sport offered so much, and people flocked, finding their own version of what mountain biking meant. year was in jail my 18th year Vietnam 19 was a bad year for this 20th century man 21 I went in blackjack catch 22 right here I am it take 23 seconds get to heaven in 24 hour baby who gives a damn in the late 80s and into the 90s mountain bike racing hit big and made the best into heroes, many of whom have found lifelong careers evolving around the sport they loved.
what exactly just happened? History was made in 1982 when Shimano released the first complete mountain bike group, the M700 series. No longer were these mountain bikers forced to use the leftovers of the road set. 1986 saw the Shimano M730 series, the introduction of SIS. As mountain biking grew, so did the need for gears, and gears that executed shifts flawlessly. SIS, Shimano Index Shifting, or what some called click shifting, was a means for exact and perfect shifts. You no longer had to worry about being in between gears. One click is all you needed to select your gear. 1987 saw the introduction of the M732 series. As mountain bikers continued to tackle more diverse terrain, the needs for more precise shifting and more gears became apparent. To match this, Shimano introduced seven speeds and hyperglide sprockets. The introduction of hyperglide sprockets, which increased chain and cassette durability, also made shifting smoother and more precise. The jump from six to seven gears meant you could expand the gear range and keep the gears ratios closer. 1987 also saw the introduction of SPD, Shimano Pedaling Dynamics. Road clipless pedals existed, however this didn't work for mountain bikers because in certain uphill situations riders would have to get off their bikes and walk. The SPD design incorporated a recessed cleat. When designed with an off-road shoe, it revolutionized mountain biking forever. In 1995, the M739 series introduced V-brakes to the market, also added an 8th gear and Rapid Fire SL. As time went on, faster riders met with more aggressive terrain. The need for stronger and more efficient brakes grew rapidly. Shimano reacted with the V-brake, first introduced to the XT family. These powerful, more efficient brakes were a much welcome sight. Rapid Fire SL levers are still used today by a full spectrum of mountain bikers. Rapid Fire is suited to urgent shifting, providing the ability to downshift three gears in one stroke. Gone are the gear-to-time selections. 1998, M750 series. In 1998, hyperdrive crank sets and nine speeds were added. Hyperdrive was engineered to work as a system, working together with the front derailleur and chain to provide a single goal, quiet and trouble-free shifting for the rider. In 1999, Shimano introduced its first set of disc brakes and the XT family got them first. The system came charged with eco-friendly mineral oil, twin piston calipers, and the rider's choice of pads. These were among the strongest brakes on the market. Shimano's M760 series was released in 2003. In 2003, two things were brought to the XT group. One was Holotech 2, the other was the mountain bike dual control lever. Holotech 2 was the first in a generation. Holotech 2 was designed to simplify and increase the performance and stiffness of the crank set. Using an integrated bottom bracket and a two-piece design crank, the number of parts were reduced which significantly cut weight while the integrated bottom bracket and oversized axle increased rigidity. Dual control levers or DCL. As an option of Shimano's tried and true rapid fire system, dual control levers integrated the shifting function into the brake lever, allowing you to shift up or down from virtually any hand position. In 2007, Shimano introduced the M770 series. As the terrain mountain bikers tackle become more varied and aggressive, Shimano has developed two new components to match the needs of modern day mountain bikers. High power disc brakes with servo wave hydraulic levers and the all new Shimano Shadow RD. When you pull a servo wave brake lever, initial fluid displacement is fast. Little lever movement is needed to bring the pads into contact with the rotor. The power multiplication factor then increases rapidly at the pad contact, so more of the lever stroke is used to apply greater braking power with improved control. The Shimano Shadow RD caters to the demands of the aggressive mountain bikers with its stable mounting bracket and low profile design. All features which lead to more reliable riding in even more diverse and challenging conditions. Oh.
25 years, mountain biking has evolved to a point that couldn't have been predicted. Where does mountain biking go from here? We can only guess. What we do know is that as mountain bikers continue to evolve and venture into uncharted territory, Shimano XT will continue to be there, developing products for modern day mountain biking. Boys rock. Shimano, your XT, the original mountain bike group. Ah. Uh -huh.